Hello and welcome back to Coding with Unity. Today, we'll be going over the A-star algorithm, what it is, how it works, and how to implement it into Unity. What I have pulled up right now is a few example projects, but I think looking at it is a little confusing. So, I went ahead and created a grid in GIMP and we will walk through this to see exactly how it works. So, the A-star algorithm, as you can see, is f is equal to g plus h, where the h is the heuristic of the distance between the tile you're checking and the end. So if you're in unity, it's something like vector3.distance, which isn't exactly what we will be using, but that's basically what it is. Anyways, walking through this, what we're basically going to be doing is checking which of these values is the lowest values to the end of the tile. So if we started with this tile, first thing that we would need to do is find the neighbors of this tile, which we are not going to be using diagonals. I will show you maybe at the end of the video how to add it in. It's not hard. It's just a few lines of code. But for the project that I'll be using this in, it will not be having diagonals. So for the majority of this, it won't have diagonals in it. Anyways, the first thing you'd want to evaluate is the G. Since this is this and this is a neighbor of this, the first g is 1, being the distance from here to here. If all of our distances is 1, both of these should have a g of 1. The g of this would be 0, because it is the tile we're starting on. So the h is just g plus h, which would be 1, o, start over here a little, 1, o, 3, 1, and 9, 4, 1. Then we would go through a loop. We would see which one of our open set is the smallest because our neighbors will be added to the open set. We will see this one's the smallest, so we'll go to here. Once moved, we'll have this one added to the closed set. These two will be in the open set. We need to add these neighbors to the open set. And then we need to evaluate the f for both of these tiles and the g. The g is going to be 2 because it's our second step. And then the f will be 932 and 842. Then we will remove the current tile from the open set, add it to the closed set. We will loop through our open set, find the lowest value, which is this one, add it to the closed set find its neighbors, which is this one, this one, and this one. The neighbor's already in the closed set, so we ignore it. We evaluate these values. So it's step three, step three, eight, whoop, that was a grade eight, 833, 743. And then add, we put a green mark to have it set to be in the open sets. We look through all of these, find the lowest, and we keep going. As you can tell, the pattern that we are doing, it's going to keep going this way, and then it should work its way up to there. I'm not going to work my way all the way through it. I don't think there's any need. There's plenty of sources you can go to re-see how this works, but that's a basic example of how this algorithm will be working. Let's go ahead and go into our code. I will be using the project that we used before in the last series of setting up a grid in a 2D array. And we will be using that project to use a star algorithm with. The first thing you're going to want to do is create a file to hold your code for the a star algorithm. We'll call it a star. Go ahead and load your Visual Studios up. Once Visual Studios is loaded up, remove the mono behavior. We will not be adding this class to anything. We will just be accessing it from other classes mainly in this project, the grid manager. So in A star, we will remove these functions. We will now need a something to store our spots in. So if we go back into GIMP, we need a class that has a G, an H, and an F. 
So let's create a class for that. I'm just going to put it in the same file. It's probably best to create your own file, but yeah, this is how we're doing it. We will call it the spots class, and to set it up, we'll say public class spot. It needs a public int f, a public int g, and a public int h. We'll set up a constructor for our spot where f equals 0, g equals 0, and h equals 0. Now that we have our spots class set up, we can go back into our a star class, create a public list of spots, or we'll use a 2D array of spots, actually. Call it spots. Then set up our a star constructor. It's going to pull the grid from our grid manager, the cell 2D array grid. So put cell 2D array. We'll call it grid with a lowercase g. And then it'll just say spots equals new spots. And then we'll use the width and the length from the utils class, which is utils.columns and utils.rows. Then we will set up our public void create path, which this will also require a 2D cell for setting up the actual array of spots with the values that are required. Now within the create path, we'll do a for loop through the columns, which is utils.columns and then a for loop through the row, utils.rows. Now, for every spot within the grid, it will create a new spot in the spots ij position. This is the basic setup of what we'll be using to create the path with. We'll also want to go into our cell decoration class. We need to store the decoration into a data object for when we want to pull the height of the decoration and for walls in our pathfinding. So we'll just set up a public tile theme, tile decoration object. We'll call it data. And then we will store the decoration within the data when we want to get the value for the data. And then we'll store the decoration object in the data reference for when we want to pull the data from the decoration object. And then going into our grid manager on start, we'll say a star equals new a star. So you want to set up up here, a star, a star. And then just say a star equals new a star. And then pass the grid in. So we should be able to run this with no errors. Let's just run it to make sure that nothing crashes. We have no errors. You can see nothing's happening, but of course we haven't really coded anything to happen yet. Let's go back into our project. The next thing we will be doing, we need a open set and a closed set to store the values. If we go back into our picture, when I was saying earlier, these green marks are open sets and these red marks are closed sets, we will be using two list of spots to store this within our code. So going back into our project, we will create a two list for the open set and the closed set. I'm going to make these public variables for now so that we can easily debug them from the grid manager. But in a full project, you would want these to really be created per path that is being created. So if you're using the same A star class for two paths being created, these won't overlap on one another. But for ease of use, we will just put them as public variables for now. So let's make a public list of spots for the open set and the closed set. 
and now we will need a spot for the start and the end. Same reason we're storing these globally like this is for ease of debugging. We Later on we will change this. Now going down into here, let's set up our start to be grid 00, zero or spot 00. zero. And our end will be the end of the spots. So end equals spots utils.columns minus one utils.rows minus one. And then if we go back into here, as I said before, the first one will be the first starting tile. So we'll take the starting tile and add it to our open set. So we'll just say open set dot add start then when we want to debug these we'll need to know the x and y location of the spot so let's store those values within the spots class we'll pull in the x and the y from the constructor and then set x to x and y to y and then just go ahead and set it inside of here now going into our grid manager we can set up some simple debugging to see our path being created in action so we'll just do a for loop through the close set and the open set and then we'll use the start and the end and just change the colors of the tiles on our grid based off which thing they are in inside of our A star class. So doing a for loop through the close set, we'll say A star dot close set dot count. And then we'll just say grid A star dot close set I dot X. And then the A star's close set Y. And now we'll set its renderer color to red. Now we'll do the same thing for the open set, but we'll use green for the color. Oops. Now we will set up the start and the end. So we'll say if a star dot start is not equal to null, then we'll use the starts x and the starts y. We'll set its color to cyan, and then we'll set the end color to black. Now if we go back into our project, we'll check to make sure nothing is broken, but we should see that when start is added to the open set, it should either turn, well, it should turn green and then get overridden to scion by the start one. Let's go into our project, click play, and make sure we have no errors. So far no errors, but you can see nothing is happening because we haven't actually called our a star dot create path to do anything yet. So if we put an input in for creating the path, if input dot get mouse button down, we'll just say when you click the mouse, it'll do a star dot create path using the grid with a capital G. Going back into our project, clicking play, and then if you click with your mouse, you'll see this one turns Scion, and this one turns black. Alright, we're getting somewhere. The next thing we'll do is set this up to actually be a coroutine so we can watch it happen once per frame and see the path actually being created. So to do that, we'll change this void to an I enumerator. We're also going to go ahead and set up the basic functionality of the while loop. The, the algorithm we'll be using. 
Now, what we're going to say here is that the open sets dot count is greater than zero, we still need to evaluate more paths. Within here, we'll do a for loop through the open sets count. We'll check if the open sets f is less than the open sets winners f, which is the open set with the lowest f. So let's make an index to store that. We'll make it an int and set it to zero. Then we will say open set i dot f is less than open set winner dot f. If it is, we'll set winner to be i. Now we need to store our current spot, or we don't need to, but to make things a little cleaner, we'll store the current spot. Now we'll say if current is equal equal to the end tile, then we are done. We found the end. So we'll say debug.log complete. For now, it will keep evaluating. We'll make it actually break the path and end the while loop later. But let's watch it debug everything for the current time being. We'll then remove. Like I said earlier, after you evaluate the path and move on to your next path, you're going to remove this one from the open set and add it to the closed set. So that's what we'll do now. We'll say open set dot remove current and then close set dot add current. Now we will set up our yield return new and we'll wait for the end of the frame before allowing the while loop to process one more loop. This will make it visualize instead of just giving our end path at the end. Now going into the grid manager, instead of saying a star dot create path grid, we will store the coroutine that's running so we can end it later. Coroutine create path. And now we will bracket this off. We'll say create path equals a star or create path equals start coroutine a star dot create path. Then pass in the grid. Get rid of this. And if there's already a coroutine running, we want to stop the coroutine. So if coroutine or if create path is not equal to null, we'll run stop coroutine create path. So now let's go back into our project and make sure no errors happen when we attempt to create a path at the current moment. We still have no errors, we get our two paths created, but still nothing is happening because we're still missing a large functionality of the A star algorithm. So if we go back to our GIMP picture, as I said before, we need to add all the neighbors of the tile, and then we need to evaluate the values for the neighbors if it's not already in the closed set. So to do that, we will say, if the current neighbors is equal to zero, or first we need to set up the neighbors in the spots class. We'll go down to spots and we'll add a public void add neighbors. It'll take a 2D array of grid. Within this function, we'll say if x is less than utils.columns minus one neighbors Oops. Set up a func a list to hold all of your neighbors. Then we'll say neighbors dot add grid x minus one and y. 
then we'll say if x is greater than 0, this one is x plus 1, and this one is x minus 1. And then we'll say if y is less than utils.rows, so if y is less than utils.rows minus 1, the neighbors dot add grid x y plus one. Then we need to say if u or if y is greater than zero, neighbors dot add y minus one. Then going back up to this class, we can say if current dot neighbors dot count is equal equal to zero current dot add neighbors using spots. Then we will store the neighbors of the current equals so we'll say var neighbors equals current dot neighbors. Now we need to loop through all of our neighbors, so we'll say neighbors dot count and within this I just realized I haven't increased my text size, so I apologize for the first half of the video having a smaller text size. I'll see if I can fix it in process or in post to see if I can make it a little better, but from here on out I'll go ahead and increase the text size and make this way easier for y'all to read. I'll go ahead and scroll up also so you can look back through this if you want to, if you need to be able to see this code any easier. Okay, so within this for loop, we need to make sure that the neighbor is not already within the closed set. First, we need to store the neighbor in the for loop that we're currently on, just to make it a little easier to type. We'll say neighbors i is equal to n, or n is equal to neighbors i. Then we'll say if closed set dot contains n is not true using the explanation mark at the beginning. Now we want to set the path distance from the start of the path to the next step within a temporary variable so we can use this for comparing and setting later. So we'll say temp g equals current dot g plus 1. And this is, if we go back into GIMP, this is the 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, and 3 that we set up letting us know the distance from the path that we have to walk to get there. So this one's 2, so 1, 2. This one's 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. And if this one would be 4, 4, 5, and so on. So going back into our code, we have that set up. Now we need to say, set up a bool for figuring out if it's a new path or not. We'll just go ahead and set it to false. And then if the neighbor is already in the open set, we need to do a check before doing anything with it. So we'll say open set dot contains n and if the temp g is less than n dot g, we'll say n dot g is equal to temp g. Make that an int. That would probably help if we named that correctly. So n.g is equal to temp g, and then we'll say new path equals true. Now this is for if the temp g, if the next step that we're taking is less than the g that is stored on that open set, then we will use this as the new path because it is faster. And if it is not, we've already decided it is a non-optimal path based off of a previous loop. So if it's not in the open set, we'll say else. 
If it's not in the open set, then it is a new spot that we need to evaluate because it's not in the open set and it's not in the closed set. So we'll just say n.g equals temp g and then new path equals true. And then we need to also add this neighbor for we can evaluate it on the next loop. All right, so if it is a new path, we'll say n.h will be the heuristics, which will be a function we set up in a second, and then n.f, n.f will be equal to n.g plus n.h, which is, this is the formula pretty much that is here, f equals g plus h, f equals g plus h. So now we need to get the actual heuristic for f, or for h, and the way we do that is pretty simple. We'll just go outside of this function, make sure we're outside of it. We'll create a void called heuristic, and it's going to return an int, and it'll be private. Heuristic, it needs a spot a and a spot b. And we're going to be using something called a Manhattan heuristic, which is the recommended heuristic for non-diagonal movement within a grid. There's also other heuristics such as the Chebyshev distance and the octile distance, but those are for diagonal movements. And we can add that in at the end just to see what that looks like. But like I said before, we aren't going to be using diagonals for the project that I'm using. So the heuristic is going to be between n and the n spot. And then here we'll say var dx equals system dot math dot abs a dot x minus b dot x. Then we'll say var dy equals system dot math dot abs a dot y minus b dot y. Now we will return 1 times dx plus dy. Oh, wrote that pretty good, didn't I? Now that we have the heuristics set up, we can go back into our project after saving, make sure that this will run without giving any errors, this is the core functionality of the actual A star loop that's doing all of the math that's required for finding the neighbors. So this is the math, and this is what paths need evaluating. Let's go back into Unity and see what it looks like with how we have it currently set up. So if we click int click, we get an error. Let's go see what our error is. It says current.neighbors.count equal to zero is a null reference exception. Let's see what we did. Going down the spot, we did not make our neighbors equal to a new list of spots. Going back into our project, click enter, and you'll see that it's just flood filling. Now this is technically working, and the reason it is flood filling like it is, is because we are missing something called tie breaking. And tie breaking is making sure that if our open sets f is equal equal to the open sets winner f, we need to do one more evaluation to determine which what, what the winner actually is. So if we go to here, we'll say else if open set i dot f is equal equal to open set winner dot f and then if the open sets i dot f is equal equal to the winners dot f we will compare the heuristics or the h value of the open set i and the open sets winner and then if the open set i's heuristic is less than the winners heuristic we will set the winner to the i so if open set i dot h is less than open set winner dot h winner will be equal to i 
If we save that, then go back into our project and click play, we will see the difference that tiebreaking makes when doing the A-star algorithm. You'll see that it went straight to the end and then flood filled after. The reason it flood filled, you can see that complete will run as soon as it gets to end, and then it just keeps going. But we could easily fix this and make it not have to do all of those calculations. If we change this complete to a break to cancel out our while loop. You'll see that it went straight to the end and ended. Do that one more time to make sure it works. It seems to work. Now, the next thing we want to do, because currently you can see that this is the path that is most optimal, but that is not actually our path. That's the closed set. But because this path that it needed to look for was had no walls in the way, and it was so simple that it makes the closed set look like the path, but it's not actually. And you'll be able to more clearly see that when we add in walls in a later step. So if we go back into here, we can display our path by going above the while loop, storing the path in a public variable, so debugging is easier. We'll just copy the closed set and name it path. Now going back here to right above, right above here. And we will evaluate our path before the end is broken. If we evaluate it after, the last section of our path will not be added to the path. So we'll do it here. We'll say path equals new list of spots. And then var temp equals current. Then we'll say path dot add temp. Now we will set up a while loop checking if the temp has a previous. We have not set this up yet, so if we go down into our spots class, we can add a public spot previous. Then going back up, we'll say temp.previous is not equal to null. So while temp.previous is not equal to no, null path.add temp.previous and then temp is equal to temp.previous. And this will loop backwards through our path, binding all of the tiles with a previous which will give us a chain of tiles that is our optimal path using the A star algorithm. The last thing we need to do is if we go down to where our new path is, we'll just say n.previous is equal to current. Now to display our path, we'll go into our grid manager. We'll do one more for loop through the path instead of the open set. copy and paste this over open set eyes and open set and we'll display our path oops and we'll display our path as blue going back into our project clicking play and enter you'll see our path is now blue now the last thing we want to do is add in walls, because what's pathfinding without walls, right? You might as well draw a straight line. So to add in walls, we'll go down to our spots class and add height into the constructor, which will be an int height. We need to store the height, we'll say public int height. Then we'll say height is equal to height. Then to set it up, we'll scroll up to here and we are pulling the height from our grid decoration object that we set up before. So if we go into cell, cell decoration, our height is in this using this variable. We need to go ahead and change this to an int so we have no errors. And then to pull the height that we need, we're going to say grid i 
j dot decoration dot is created if the decoration is created then we'll say grid i j dot decoration dot data dot height and if it's not created we'll pass in a zero so this says if decorations created use the decorations height if it's not created put in a zero meaning a decoration will be acting as a wall if within our project if within our project you go to our decoration objects our cactus should have a height of 1 our flower can be 0 a rock should be 1 and a tree should be 1 so now our decoration objects have heights that are passed into the creation of the spots. And now to actually evaluate these, we need to go down to openset.contains n and add n and and n.height is less than 1. If we go back into our project, compile and click play, you'll see that the tiles are not being added to the open set, but our path is still just this straight line. Let's draw objects around the edges to see a more complicated path. To do that, we'll go into our cell. And this says if utils.isEdge, we'll just get rid of this. Oh, this is for updating. So we'll get rid of this. Make this a 2.5. Or no, we'll leave it at 5 for now. Click play. We now have objects spawning on the edges, so it can't just go straight to there. It's going to have to go up this way somewhere. So click enter. <laughs> and you'll notice there's actually a tree in the end spot, so it can't actually get to the end. So it did all of the path choosing and then returned the last path it chose before it ran out of op options. So let's just reopen it and get a path that we can actually get to the end of. All right, click enter. You'll see it found its way to the end. Let's increase our grids or yes, increase our game size to 20 and see if it can do it with a more complicated path. This one has a end spot covered up, but let's click enter anyways and see what happens. Seems to be working pretty nicely. We still need to do a optimization pass over our code to make it run even nicer and clean some things up, but you can see I believe this is a very good starting point for using the A-star algorithm within Unity. If you don't want to debug your path and you just want to see the end result, you can simply go within your A-star file to where your yield return new and put this outside of the while loop, save, go back into your project, click enter, and then when you create the path, it will just return the end result. Let's make the path a little smaller. And get one that will actually go to the end. <laughs> I thought that was going to go to the end. Obviously it did not. There we go. We have an instant path drawn through our forest of trees and flowers using the flowers with no height and the trees as one height all the way to the end. And it did it pretty optimally, I only had to check a few extra tiles that it didn't need to. Let's just do a one more big test just to see how well it works. This is probably going to take at least like two or three seconds to find the path, but why not try it? It worked. Excellent. Alright, so in the next video we'll do an optimization pass over the code to get it run get it to run a little faster and to be able to have simultaneous paths being created at the same time, instead of this being a function that needs to wait for this one to complete before another one completes. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It didn't take us long at all to code the A star algorithm, and I hope it makes a little more sense and you're able to implement this into your games using the functionality that we talked about. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time, where we will be discussing 
refractoring the code and optimizing it and using it in an actual game project. The project that I believe I'll be using it in will be a Fire Emblem clone, so a turn-based tactical strategy game, but that could change. That is the plan for now, though. 